So, hello and welcome to lesson 10 in our study of mathematical biology 2. So, in this lesson, we are going to talk about the derivation of the reaction diffusion system. So, note that in our previous video, we learned how to derive the diffusion equation and we talked briefly about it. Okay, so in this video, we will be learning how to derive the diffusion reaction system. So I'm Boido Kanrindov, a final year student of mathematics, KNUST, and I'll be taking you through this lesson. So let's take some introduction. So reaction diffusion systems are mathematical models which correspond to physical phenomena. The most common is a change in space and time of the concentration of one or more chemical substances. So, for instance, local reactions in which the substances are transformed into each other and diffusion which causes the substances to spread out over a surface in space. Okay. So, this, diffusion, um, this reaction diffusion systems are naturally applied in chemistry. However, the system can also describe dynamical processes of non-chemical nature, right? So that means we can apply it in other fields except chemistry. So and examples are found in biology, geology, physics, and ecology. So mathematically, reaction diffusion systems take the form of semi-linear parabolic partial differential equations. So if you could recall, we said that with the wave equation, um, the diffusion equation, sorry, it was parabolic partial differential equation. But with the reaction diffusion system, it is semi-linear parabolic partial differential equation, okay? So they can be represented in the general form as what you can see here. So del C del T equals F of C X T plus D then nabla C or del C del T equals F of C X T plus so this one is sorry Laplacian right there's a Laplacian operator and this one is rather the nabla squared right so that's how we can um, generally that's how the um diffusion reaction system looks like okay all right so there is it this is the general form so this is what we want to derive okay so here the c of x t represents the unknown vector function and d is a diagonal matrix of diffusion coefficients or what we call the diffusivity and the f accounts for all local reactions okay so now how are we going to derive this or that they are the same thing okay you know this is a divergent squared so square of the divergence will give us the laplacian so before we start with the derivation let us take some theorems which will be used in okay so we will take the divergence theorem or the Gauss theorem or the Ostrogatsky's theorem. So the divergence theorem states that the surface integral of a vector field over a closed surface, which is called the flux, through the surface is equal to the volume integral of the divergence over the region inside the surface. Inside the surface. So mathematically, this is what the divergence um, theorem talk about okay and let's also note this so the divergence of a vector field right which is represented by this symbol the nabla here dot f is given by del f del x plus del f del y plus del f del z right so that means that the nabla itself alone is given by del del x plus del del y plus del del z if you are using three special variables okay and one thing i should notice that 
the twice of the nabla right the divergence is going to give us the laplacian right so that one is given by what we can see here so you have to note this because throughout the derivation you'll be using some of these things okay so that's the reason why it's very important for you to understand them before we start deriving the reaction diffusion system all right we'll also be using what we call the fixed law of diffusion so the fixed law of diffusion states that the flux g of a material is proportional to the gradient of the concentration of the material right so mathematically it means that the flux g is directly proportional to minus del c del n so the change in concentration of the material right and we have a negative sign because you know diffusion is movement from higher concentration to lower that's the reason we have the negative sign here all right so um removing this proportionality sign here we can do that with an equal to and we bring a constant of proportionality which is minus d and this minus d is what we call the diffusion this d sorry is what we call the diffusion co constant or diffusivity all right so that's what the um fixed law states okay so now let's go to the main derivation so the general conservation equation states that the rate of change of the amount of material in volume v is equal to the rate of flow of material across sorry how can i see a clause <laughs> all right that was a slip of tongue so across the surface s enclosing the volume plus the material created in volume okay so this is what the general conservation equation states and we have to represent that mathematically and from that we begin our derivation okay so we are going to let c of x y z be the concentration of the material then by the equation here the general conservation equation representing it mathematically this is what it states right so this equation here So when you get this equation, um, right, so this equation here, everything there. So if you get this, then the rest is very simple because you are going to apply the rules that and the theorems that we talked about when we begin in the video, okay? So we will get this here. So you can see that it says that the rate of change of the amount of material in volume. So that's what you can see here. That's the first part of the statement is equal to the rate of flow of the material across the surface and that is the flux all right then it says plus the material created in volume right so this is the material created in volume so this is how I represent the general conservation equation mathematically all right so from here you can see that all these this is a triple integral, a triple integral, but this is a double integral. And we want to change the double integral to a triple integral. And the term which can help us do this is what we call the divergence theorem. So, pair the divergence theorem thing here, we have ds. So, from the divergence theorem, when you have um, in double integral c dot s around this region, is equal to the triple integral along this region then um, what we can see here right okay so I hope you see that okay so that means that we can change this double integral here to a triple integral using the divergence theorem this rule here so doing that it implies that what we can see here that's this equals that right so that holds so that's the reason why before we started we looked at the divergence theorem right so now when we put this into equation one wherever we find this then we are going to get this equation here so putting equation two into equation one then we are going to get this here right 
or king and can you also recall the fixed law of diffusion yes so the fixed law of diffusion we said that this was the mathematical expression for rate of king right and this was when we have just one special variable that is x so when we have more than one let's say three special variables this is how we can expand it can you see that so from here we come here you see it's very simple so minus d then del c del x plus del c del y to whatever we can find there right and can you see that this del del, del x c so this is the same as del c del x plus del c del y plus del c del z and this is the same as the divergence of what c can you see that this year the same as the divergence of c and i think before starting the video i yes i showed you here so this is the same as the divergence of c right so what this means is that the whole of this can be represented as the divergence of c so that means that now j will be equal to minus d then time the divergence of what c all right so now this is our um flux so we can substitute this into this equation equation three so wherever we find this that's what we we'll put there so making that substitution is going to give us what you can see here so you can see wherever we find the g we made that substitution okay and after getting here we are almost done with the derivation okay you can see that if you know the rules it's very simple so for simplicity for now we will not include the variables okay but we know we all know that it's x y z t and the rest so we can write this in simple form as del del t then this side and you see this negative plus this negative will give us positive and we have this as well right then from here you know the integral operator is a linear operator so we can combine these two all right when you combine them you are going to get this and we can also combine the three of them so this one can come to the left hand side so that the right the right hand side becomes zero so when we do that we will get the triple integral del c del t minus um nabla times d nabla c minus f right dv is equal to zero and you can see that when we have this so before we can have an integral which will give us zero what this implies is that the function here because you see when we have integral f of x is equal to zero that means f of x is zero so that means that whatever we have here we can equate it to zero okay so that's what we've seen here and when we equate this to zero we are going to get del c del t will be equal to what you can see here i hope you've seen that all right but you know our diffusion our d is a constant that's diffusion constant so diffusivity so um we can combine these two you know i told you this time this will give us this which is the laplacian all right so where this is a diffusion constant so that means that we can finally have del c del t be equal to d i mean whatever we have here plus whatever we have here right so this or that right so you can see that here it was the nabla squared which is the same as the laplacian so this is what we call the general reaction diffusion system and you can see that it was very easy for us to derive it okay so now that we know the reaction diffusion system in our next video we will learn how to derive the fischer homograph equation and do something small about it in the subsequent ones we'll talk about the analytic solution qualitative solution for the fischer homograph equation all right so thank you very much and see you in the next video